Hey guys, this is Nikki of Bubble Babes Bath Company and of Bubble Babes University. Today's video, we are making banana nut bath bombs. In this video, I'm going to give you a little breakdown of each ingredient. Someone asked me on Tuesday at um, our live sessions, and don't forget, join me every Tuesday, 7 p.m. We will be live on Facebook and on YouTube. So join us every Tuesday. Bring your questions, anything you want to ask. In today's video, I'm going to explain the ingredients. To make a basic bath bomb, you need baking soda and citric acid. You need two parts baking soda to one part, one part citric acid, and that will create your basic bath bomb. You add different elements or different ingredients to your bath bomb to enhance the experience. So if you want it to be more moisturized and you add oils and butters, if you want it to be more relaxing, you would add like bath salts. If you want it to be foaming, you would add like milk powders and SLSA. But we will go further. Oh, and if you want to add hardeners, you would do something with kale and clay or cream, cream of tartar. But we're gonna go into each and every ingredient I'm only gonna give you details of the ingredients that I use. So first we're adding the baking soda. I'm using 625 grams of baking soda and I am using a sifter and you wanna sift out all of your ingredients because if you do not sift them, you will have clumps and that will result in clumps of white powder in your bath bombs and that's not attractive unless it's a white bath bomb. What I like to do when measuring out my ingredients, I like to measure it out and sift it in a separate bowl, then add it to the mixing bowl. We are adding 325 of citric acid. Citric acid and baking soda gives you the kind of reaction like baking soda and vinegar. When you were in school and you made volcanoes <laughs> and you found out that baking soda and vinegar has that reaction and it explodes, well, that's the same thing that baking soda and citric acid does, hence the name bomb. And I'm just going to sift these out, sift out the lumps and add it to the baking soda. Some people like to add the citric acid at the end because of reaction or because they are blooming their colors and they're coloring their baking soda. They say that it makes for a brighter bath bomb. Um, I never had a problem with adding the baking soda at the beginning. So this is what I do. But if you would like to add the baking soda, I mean the citric acid at the end and do the wet ingredients to your baking soda and your other dry ingredients and add your citric acid last, that's totally up to you. Play around with it and see what method works best for you. This one is fine for me. Now I'm adding 50 grams of Epsom salt and Epsom salt is used to relax and soothe sore muscles. I'm adding cream of tartar. I am adding 10 grams of cream of tartar and that is used to harden the bath bomb and also to help it fizz a little better. If you want, you can also use tapioca starch. I don't use tapioca starch. I find that cream of tartar works really good for me. So just 10 grams of the cream of tartar. And you don't necessarily need to sift the cornstarch, the cream of tartar, the SLSA, the kale and clay, because it's usually not clumpy. But just to be on the safe side, you can just put everything through the sifter. Next, we are going to add the cornstarch, and cornstarch is known to soothe the skin. So we are adding 10 grams of cornstarch. We are adding in kale and clay. Kale and clay helps harden the bath bomb and it also is known to detoxify skin. And a little tip, little fun fact, it can also be used as baby powder. We are adding 20 grams of kale and clay. The next ingredient is going to be SLSA and that is known as a bubbling agent it's very gentle on the skin It's derived from coconut and palm it is also called baby foam and um, there's a difference between SLSA and SLS the SLS um, the larger the molecules are smaller so it, it it penetrates the skin which can cause irritation which is why it has such a bad rap 
When using SLSA, you want to make sure that you have a mask on because it is airborne. It will get caught up in your throat and your nose. So make sure that when you are using it, that you're wearing a mask. And also when you add it to your bowl, that you don't just let the, the powder go everywhere. Kind of slowly pour it into your bowl. 20 grams of SLSA. I am using a mica powder to add color to my bath bomb. Mica powders do not color the water and they give it an iridescent sheen on the top, but there are certain micas that you should be aware of. Do not use any micas with ultramarines or chromiums. And that's basically the greens and the blues. Um, but just pay attention to your ingredients. Not all colors are made for bath bomb use because it does uh, penetrate the mucous membranes. And if it does that, you have to avoid those type of colorants. So you could use micas, you could use lakes, you could use dyes. So I'm just gonna add some basic bronze basics and this is from TKB into my mixture. And like I said, it's not, I don't want it to color the water. I just wanted to give it a little iridescent sheen. And I'm gonna start out with this, but if I need more, I'm going to add more. I'm gonna gently mix this in my mixer and then add my wet ingredients. For bath bombs, you can use butters and oils for this particular recipe. I am not using butters, I am only using oil and you can use whatever oil you would like. I like to use light away oil, but depending on what you were going for with your bath bomb is the type of oil that you will use. Keep in mind that when you are adding butters, a cocoa butter, cocoa butter will give you a harder bath bomb. Shea butter and mango butter, those will not give you as hard a bath bomb. But you also want to make sure that you test and see what works for you. When you melt down your butters, make sure that they come down to room temperature before you add them to your dry mixture. I am adding 10 grams of oil. So we're going to add polysorbate 80 and that is to disperse the oils, the color into the water so that it is not sitting like a film on the top of your bath water. For this recipe, I'm only adding five grams of polysorbate 80. And next we're going to add the fragrance. Now you don't wanna add too much fragrance into the recipe because if you add too much fragrance, it may stick to your bath bomb, especially the plastic molds. It will stick inside the bath bomb. And I mean the bath bomb mold, and that's not what you want. So I'm adding my fragrance and I'm adding 15 grams of fragrance oil. I think I'm going to add 10. Yeah, I'm going to add 10. You use something that is going to bind it all together. And that is witch hazel alcohol or distilled water. Now, if you use alcohol, it, it, it results in a harder bath bomb and also less water content. If you use witch hazel, and I use witch hazel, so if you use witch hazel, this has 85% water, which may help your, I mean, which may cause your bath bomb to react prematurely. So you may not want to do witch hazel and distilled water is the same way, but you have to be very sparingly with it. Um, because you don't want your bath bomb to be too wet because if it's too wet then you're, it's going to sink or it's going to start reacting you may have warts you may have you know just bubbling on the top of it and it's not very pretty and attractive so just be mindful of what which binder you are going to use and like I said I use witch hazel but it's totally up to you what you would use I have done this before with 91% alcohol but my preference is the witch hazel and I am going to add 5%, I mean 5%, I'm going to add five grams of witch hazel to this mixture. And you can add this at the end. I like to add it right here. We are going to let the dry ingredients fully get mixed and incorporated, but we don't want the mixer on too high. I'm not going to mix the wet ingredients yet because it gets thick. So I will mix it as soon as it's ready to pour into the bowl and slowly add it to the bowl. Okay, so now I am going to mix my wet ingredients, turn my mixer on low and slowly add it to the mixture. Now you just want to make sure that you 
mix it to get all of the dry ingredients incorporated you don't want any like powders left at the bottom sometimes there's like powders that was not colored at the bottom of the bowl you don't want that and then you want to just check your consistency for your bath bomb and make sure that it clumps together like this but not easily it doesn't easily break apart like you want it to be able to hold its shape and not easily crumble in your hand but you don't want it to be too wet because again that will cause your bath bomb to react and to also have flat spots and things like that if it's not a flat bath bomb this bath bomb we are doing today is a waffle and this is the mold that i'm using i got this mold from etsy i don't remember the seller but if i find her i will put her in the description box below so when you are filling your bath bomb you want to make sure that you get every detail you want to add a light layer make sure that you get every detail and push bath bomb mixture into the bath bomb so that you make sure that you get the shape and then you want to fill it without packing too much because they say packing too much make your bath bomb sink but i like them packed really well because that way they hold their shape and don't break in your hands when they're drying Again, if you want the full breakdown for um, bath bomb ingredients and things to avoid and things like that, go to the Honor Society. I will have the guide there with some tips as well. And you could basically, you don't have to use this bath bomb um, recipe. You can use any other bath bomb recipe that you'd like. This is the one that worked for me, works for me. Sometimes I use one that's high for humidity areas, for um, when you have like damp weather or whatever. But most times I use this one. Sometimes you may need to tap your mold with the spoon so it can come out, but that easily came out. And you just repeat. If you find that your mixture has gotten too hard on you and it's just become crumbly, no problem. Just give it a couple of spritzes of whatever you use, alcohol, witch hazel, or distilled water, and mix it well. Just don't leave it long enough in a spot where it'll cause a reaction or to cause your bath bomb to prematurely react. So let's make some bath bombs. And again, I like to use less fragrance because adding more eats away at your bath bomb molds, especially if you're using the plastic one. It eats away at it and you don't want that. And make sure your edges, that you really get your edges because this is the important part when you are taking it out of the molds or it will come out and break right there on your cookie sheet. This broke. This one was too dry. 